SC.
moment that we've been waiting for? This one is. Like, is this the moment that we've been waiting for? Is this the moment?
and even at the gas station. Did you know that we even eat Jesus? Yes, he's in our tummies. He provides us our daily bread, our bread of life. And doesn't life taste so good? Before the age of five, I accepted Adonai to be in my life. And ever since, he has never left me nor forsaken me. He died for me, for you, for all of us, so that we can live with our Father who art in heaven. He still walks with me. He still talks with me. He gave up his life so that we can live with him. And ever since, I have been with him.
My first encounter. Into the water I jump as I fall. Visions play, reminding me of the days I once was who they say. Nevertheless, God has the last day in my life. For my first encounter with him was mind-blowing, peace overflowing. As chaos surrounded me, everything froze. Everything froze. This little light of mine, the light that might or might not shine, my mother raised me to believe. But it takes more than that for me to receive the love that God has, and the burden to relieve. He has a spot for this seed and a plant to root, but to tell you the truth, my light was too little. Lukewarm, but never too late, the cravings of the makings of a burning fire must change to reveal my desire to meet my maker. The bread from my baker taken from dough to be pressed down, shaken together, running over, and formed and shaped into a me that's better. All this time to grow from a seed in order to meet my God's needs. All this time I grow. All this time in order to shape a me that is good, a me that is new to reveal and find my God revealing my truth.
Election Day, church. Are you guys excited that he lives? Are you excited that he rose from the dead? This is a day that we get to answer a question that has shaped history over time is, can these dry bones live? And obviously we know dry bones represent the situations and the circumstances in our lives that we can't often figure out, the situations and the circumstances that we don't often have the answers to. Dry bones represent the healing that you need, the restoration in your marriage that you need, the, the job that hasn't gone right. The question is, can it live? And this Sunday, I'm so excited that God has trusted me with the message to give you. And that message is, it can live. It can live. Because today, yes, Jesus rose, but his resurrection marks in our lives the ability for anything that we need to be resurrected, the ability for it to be resurrected. Jesus, when he rose, the Bible tells us that we rose with him. And when he rose, every situation that may seem too dark, too distant, too inconceivable in our own minds to overcome, because he rose, it can rise too. And so you guys, I'm so excited. You guys excited about what God is about to speak? You know, I get to do a small portion. I get to introduce this word, but then Pastor Deborah's gonna come up and finish it, right? Pastor Brian's just gonna do the first half. She's gonna do the second half. But I know that God is, has something incredible in store for your lives. So I'm gonna pray and get started. But Lord God, I just thank you for this moment. I thank you for this opportunity to come and minister to your people. Lord God, I pray that in this moment that you speak only what you can speak, Lord God. Lord God, I know this is a celebration of you, but God, it's a celebration because you have the ability to breathe life into us. As a result of the scars, as a result of the cross you carried, the pain you took on, the sin you overcame for us, it's all a celebration that points back to the fact that we can live now. And Lord God, we won't let this moment pass, let this day pass, let this Easter just be another Easter without receiving what Easter is all about. It's about a representation of the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is alive in us now. We can celebrate that the same power that brought Jesus back to life can bring any and every situation in our lives back to life. This day represents that there's a power available for all of us to be able to overcome what may seem like it could never be overcome. There's a champion that lives inside of us now because of what you did on this day. You defeated death, you took back the keys from hell, you brought victory riding in and you placed it on the inside of us. So this moment marks that we are victorious and everything that we touch shall prosper because you rose, God. And so in your name, we pray. In your name, we give thanksgiving. In your name, we seek healing. In your name, which is the name above all names, we shout it out loud today, being proud that Jesus rose. He has risen from the dead. And everything we see in need has been made available. In your name, I pray, the name above all names. Y'all say it with me, Jesus. Amen, amen. So like I said, I'm on a, I'm a slight bit of a clock because Pastor Deborah, I'm just the intro and Pastor Deborah has to come, she's coming up after me. I knew it. I knew it. We didn't coordinate colors. Y'all can't see her yet. Some of y'all can't who were in the room. She's wearing red, right? I just felt like it was going to be a bloody Sunday. A bloody Sunday. Not because we bleeding, it's because whatever's painting you is about to bleed. It's about to be a bloody Sunday for whatever's been trying to tell you that you can't overcome it. Well, you guys can take your seats if you're online. Thank you for joining us. Open up your Bibles to Ezekiel 37. I'm going to start at verse 1. <laughs> and I'm going to read it to you. Look at your neighbor, or if you're online, type it in the chat. 
say, yes, God rescued you. But God also can restore you. God's not simply one who will rescue us out of situations in life, but he's one that will restore things that may have been broken due to life circumstances, bad decisions of our own through bad decisions of other people. God's not simply one who will rescue you in life. He's one who will restore you in life. Ezekiel 37 and 1 starts with, the Lord took hold of me. This is Ezekiel he took hold of. And I was carried away by the spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. Y'all see the bones, right? He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? Oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscle on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you Will you know that I am the Lord? So I spoke the message just as he told me. Suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise. Y'all say rattling. We're going to make a little rattling noise this resurrection day. All across the valley, the bones of each body came together, attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. The skin formed to cover their bones, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the wind, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, oh, breathe from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me and breath came into their, bo- to their bodies. They had all came to life and stood up on their feet. A great army. Then he said to me, son of man. These bones represent the people of Israel. Look what it says. They are saying. Y'all say they are saying. They are saying. I love the, I'm not supposed to stop here, but I can't help but stop here. That oftentimes we are saying things that God hasn't said yet. And right now he's letting Ezekiel know that, look, they are saying one thing, but I have a whole nother plan. I love this picture because oftentimes we feel as though God doesn't have the ability to override our perspective. But let me tell you something. God has the ability to override your perspective. There's things that they say. There's things that you said. But at the end of the day, what did God say? Oh, man. God has a report. God has a report concerning your life. He said, they are saying we have become old, dry bones. They are saying, all hope is gone. Our nation is finished. He said, therefore prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says, O people. I will open up your graves of exile and I will cause you to rise again. Then you will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. And I want to paint a picture of this atmosphere because it's amazing to me the atmospheres God chooses in which he shares hope with us. What's amazing to me is oftentimes we feel like God speaks from the mountaintops, the points where we enjoy the things and moments that we embrace so freely. But what's amazing to me is the things that God shares to us in the valleys in life. What's a valley, Pastor Brian? Just the situations where in times where stuff has just overcome you, stuff has just overtaken you. It's amazing to me that God speaks to us and what God speaks to us in the valleys of life. And I say this because today, Pastor Brian loves Easter, loves Resurrection Day. 
But I can't help to think that some people who haven't listened in a while, some people that haven't been to church in a while, that they're listening today, hoping today just to hear something from God that gives them the hope to go further. And so as much as I would like to make this a colorful moment, I know that there's too many lives on the line not to talk about what God can do in an atmosphere you least expect it. And you might just think this is a normal Easter. I'm doing the same thing I've always done, and I'm doing the same routine I've always done. But God is always prepared to break the routine. And I just don't want you to fight what he says because he said it in an atmosphere you didn't expect him to say it. Maybe you didn't think church is the place or you just come here out of routine every Easter. But I know God has something to say regardless of how you feel about your situation. And I don't want you to fight it because he's saying it in the midst of your shame. He's saying it in the midst of your condemnation. He's saying it in the midst of you feeling as though you're too sinful to hear what he has to say. I just don't want you to reject what God has to say. Because God often says things in moments where we least expect it to be said. God will find you in the middle of your worst moment and tell you that you should live. But everything around you will try to say, no, I'm here, I'm doing this, and doing this and being here means I don't qualify. I came to tell you that God doesn't need your qualification. Jesus became your qualification. So God has free will to say what he wants to say whenever he wants to say it, regardless of if you qualify for it or not. Just take it is all I'm saying. Can y'all just take it this morning? Whatever God has to say, just take it. Don't, Don't try to push it through your experience. Don't try to push it through your qualification. Don't try to push it through your ability to be able to do. No. Just just take it. Just take it. The atmosphere, right? What Ezekiel just heard from God was stunning. This is actually the first time in a while that God had even spoken about the children of Israel and his plans for them. But what was amazing to me, he sent them to a place where there were dry bones. He sent them to a place where death was everywhere. He sent them to an atmosphere where there was nothing living. And I know that God was just painting a picture that it doesn't matter how dead the situation looks to you. God has the ability to breathe life into it. So he took Ezekiel to a dead place, a dry place, a graveyard that they would have for people just waiting for the return of Jesus to come, to waiting for the return of God to save them, put them back together. And, but they were also people who had lost all hope. This was the bones of people who had lost care, had lost sight, had lost just track of what was theirs. They had just given up all hope because they had been conquered once again. It was the bones of of the people of Israel, people whom God had rescued out of Egypt, but now they were being (laughs) kicked out of Jerusalem. They had lost Jerusalem. They had lost their home. They had lost their possessions, and they had felt as though all hope was gone. Israel at that point was a defeated nation. Everything that they had received from God, they had lost. Everything that they had received as a part of his precious promises, they had somehow squandered it away at this point. I want to paint this picture because the reason why they were hopeless is because they, it was their fault. They were hopeless because they knew they were responsible for their condition. They knew that they had played a critical role in the fact that everything was gone. And I'm saying this because it's in like that darkest moment that they were in that God takes Ezekiel out of there and says, guess what? I'm about to make these people live again. I'm about to breathe life into them Again, I'm about to restore everything that they thought they lost. I'm about to bring them back to what they thought they could never get back to. I'm about to do something that they absolutely don't even believe is possible. I'm about to take all of their dead hopes, all of their done dreams, all of their missed expectations. I'm about to take all of that. And I'm about to restore it. 
And look, I even know that they don't even have an expectation of restoration. Like, that's the most amazing picture about this moment is to realize that they weren't even hopeful. Like, they didn't even believe that they deserved restoration. Yet God said, you do. And I'm saying this because I know there's people that don't think they deserve restoration. But it doesn't matter what you think you deserve. It matters what God promised is yours. And what's the amazing thing about this picture is even though they had no expectation of being restored, it didn't stop God's mind to restore them. Oh, man. Oh, man. Y'all just say it. God had other plans. God had other plans. Regardless of where they had got themselves to and the part they played in getting there, God had other plans. Plans, and, and I want you to know this, right, that the most critical question in any difficult moment we face isn't what you can do, but what you can trust God with. That's my first point. If you ever find yourself in a difficult moment, a difficult situation where there's things that you're facing that you don't know about, look, the, 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 what happens next isn't based on your ability to do, but your choice to trust God with. Like, what are you willing to trust God with? Like, it, it doesn't matter that you don't have the capability to get yourself out of a dead situation, a dry situation, a bad situation, a situation that, that, that you created. The question truly isn't what can you do. The question is what are you willing to trust God with in this moment? Like, are you willing to say, you know what, God? I don't even have the answer, but I'll trust you with the answer. Like, I don't even know the way, but I'll trust you with the way. And a lot of times we stop because we're trained to think, what can we do based on our abilities? But as believers, as people of God, we got to understand that's not the best question to ask when you don't know what to do is what can you do? What you should ask yourself in the moment is, what am I really ready to trust God with right now? What am I really ready to stop thinking about and really just give it to God? Like, what am I really ready to just say, you know, enough of my own efforts, God, you take it from here. I'm saying this because this Easter will only be good if you're willing to give some God something today. Like, what, what, like, what are you want to give him today? I, this is a real question, right? Y'all know Pastor Brian. I like to keep it real. This Easter will only be a moment you remember is if in this moment you make a decision to give God something that you're not going to worry about anymore. I don't, look, the point is, of these bones is to say it doesn't matter how dead it is. Doesn't matter how gone and far away you think it is from ever happening. If you still care about it, if you still have hope that something can change, if you still have within you the thought that I would really, really love for something to change about this thing, this is what today is all about, that there's not a dead enough situation that God can't do something about. The only choice you have to make is say, I'm done looking at my effort on it, and I'm going to today, today, right, right now, today, say, you know what? I, I'm going to give it to God. So before this service can progress, it will only be good is if everybody in this room just takes about 15 seconds and thinks about the deadest situation in their life, and you say, you know what? Easter 2021, no, whoosh, 2020, oh, this is 2021. <laughs> Boy, I thought I was in a whole nother decade. But Easter 2021, I made a decisive decision of myself to take this thing and give it to God, right? I'm going to give it to God. Like, I, it doesn't matter how dead it is. Today is all about once something dies, it doesn't mean it's done. Oh, man. Oh, man, I know y'all want a cute Easter speech, but today is all about the fact that even though you called it dead, it's not done. Today is a big day because the world called Jesus dead, but they forgot God wasn't done. 
And I'm saying whatever situation that you may have called dead, today's all about the fact that God says it's not done just because you called it dead. Oh, man. What is it? It, it, This service is only be good is everybody has something on their mind right now, something in their heart right now that you're saying today represents that anything can be resurrected. And God, what I need resurrected, what I'm desiring to be resurrected is this. Who's got they this? Raise your hand once you got your this. I need to see hands. The service is only going to be good. This today only means something if there's something you need resurrected. The whole point of today is that it doesn't matter how dead it is, it ain't done. I feel like I'm in the right place. If you notice, my hand was up with y'all. There's some things that in Brian's mind is dead. But because he rose today, I'm going to go ahead and renew my mind and say it's not done. It may be dead to me, but it ain't done to God. Okay. Y'all almost with me. Y'all are almost where I'm at, right? The resurrection reminds us that God is always preparing to do something to absolutely blow our mind. Resurrection reminds us that God is always preparing to do something that will absolutely exceed our expectation. This day is important because it marks for us that God can do anything as it regards our lives. But there was a critical question in Ezekiel that I I just want you To fix. Y'all say fix it. it. We about to fix something, right? In Ezekiel 37 and verse 3, God asked Ezekiel a question. He said, then he asked me, son of man, this is God talking to Ezekiel. He asked Ezekiel, can these bones become living people again? What's amazing to me is God's asking Ezekiel, right? He doesn't drug Ezekiel out to a place, a graveyard. And he's now asking Ezekiel, Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? That's what he's asking him. Seems like an interesting question to ask Ezekiel. Consider the fact you ain't asked Ezekiel if he wanted to go out there. If we was in the question asking business, we could have started way back there. But what I want you to key on and what I want you to, y'all say fix, is what Ezekiel's response was. Ezekiel's response was, oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. What I love about it is he didn't do what a lot of us do religiously. Ezekiel didn't say, well, shoot you, God. I guess it's a yes. And that's what a lot of y'all did a couple minutes ago. You religiously raised your hand. He'll resurrect it. He'll resurrect it. Yes, Pastor, I heard you say that last year. It's still dead and done. (laughs) I mean, I checked it out. I mean, I I look, I got updates. It's dead and done, Pastor. But what I love about Ezekiel's response is he said, only you can answer that. What we need to fix is who's allowed to answer the question of what can be done. Like, Like Ezekiel said, I don't have the ability to answer that question. I don't have the authority. I don't have the power. I don't have the qualifications to answer the question of can these dry bones live? God, only you can answer that. And what I'm telling you to fix on this resurrection day is to realize that You don't have the qualifications, nor do you have the power, nor do you have the authority to answer what God can do. Only 
God can answer that question. What, what I'm asking you to fix is next time and even this time as you're looking at something that's dead, don't let they tell you what can be done. Don't let yourself tell you what can be done. Don't let your fears, your past experiences, don't let your, 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 your history and your qualification answer questions only God is truly qualified to answer in your life. There's something we all got to fix. Y'all say fix it. Next time you see a difficult situation and you're wondering, can it be done? Just fix your response and say, only God can answer this question. Only God can determine what can happen here. Only God can determine what goes on next. God, it is not on me to determine what you can do. It's only my job to keep passing you stuff that I can't do nothing with. So you see, that, that's, that's, that's our part in the situation. Our part in the situation ain't determine what he can handle or what he can hold. Our job is to keep passing it because we can't handle it. Keep passing it because we don't have the answer. And let him determine what happens next. God, only you can answer, but you can't answer what I don't pass. And I'm not going to not pass it because of my past. I'm not going to not pass it because of what I've seen before. I'm not going to not pass it based on what she say, he say, and they say. I'm going to pass it because passing is what I, I do. Passing is what I do. If it's too big, I just pass it. Look at your neighbor. Type in the chat. Just say pass it. Just pass it. What's, what, what you got to lose anyway? It's, still, it's dead to you. It's dead to them. You might as well pass it to him. Just pass it. Okay. We all, we, we, y'all about ready to have some church. Let me tell you a secret. The ability to believe is already in you. The Bible tells us that every man was given a measure of faith. The ability to believe is in you. That's why you showed up. Because something in you keeps telling you it can change. It, it can be better. The ability to believe was already given to you. However, the willingness to believe resides in your mind. You have the ability to believe, but the willingness to believe resides in your mind. Like, what is your mind stopping your heart from saying you can still have? Just look at your neighbor and say, fix it. Get, get your mind out of the way. Your mind is pre-programmed based off of your past experiences and hurt. Your mind loves to reject things. Your mind loves to calculate what can happen. Your mind loves to try to figure out the ins and the outs. Your, your mind loves a lot of stuff. I'm just saying stop letting your mind stop what your heart is already telling you can happen. I'm saying don't, 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 you, you don't, you're not responding. God, you, you know, you know you want it better. Almost, I keep, Pastor Deborah got to come up. Almost lost it. But you know, you know you want it to change. Stop fooling yourself. Stop letting your mind play you as if you don't want it to change. You don't want no new husband. You want the one you got to change. You don't want no new wife. You want the one you got to change. You don't want a new job. You want your boss to change. You don't want, look. You just, you, you've moved on because your mind has told you it can't. What I'm telling you is, is get your minds out of the way. And let, only God can answer if your husband can change. Only God can answer if your wife can change, if your boss can change. If, uh, that's God, that's God, God, God. They put me in this box, so I got to stay in it. But I'm just simply saying, by now I would have been over there. Just, 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 just getting y'all ready to receive a resurrection in dead situations that God ain't even called done yet. God, God's like, he, I know he dead, but he ain't done. I mean, you still think he a little cute? done yet you ain't ready to move on yet let God resurrect it just just let him do it let him 
do it. You ain't ready to fill out no new job applications. You ain't ready to put your house on the market. You ain't ready to shop for no new car. Just because it's dead to you and them doesn't mean it's done to God. to convince yourself you ready to move on. You ain't ready to move on from that dream God gave you. I know you done tried 30 times to build a business and God says, don't stop trying. I, you came here today and Pastor Brian just wanted to tell you, although you've had 30 dead business concepts, God's not done giving them to you because God sees beyond what you think, what you can imagine, what you think is possible. And God saying, just get ready for a resurrection. Just pass it to me. I I know you don't have the answers. I know you don't have the solutions, but just because it's dead to you, it doesn't make it done to me. That's why God keeps talking about it. You like, God, shut up. Anybody be like, God, shut up? I don't, that was too much for y'all. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just talking from my relationship with God. My relationship with God, sometimes I'd be like, God, won't you just stop, just stop talking about it. I'm, I'm done. And God's like, but it, I, I'm not. Oh, y'all want to keep it real. I know every single one of y'all, somewhere in y'all phone deck, you got a person you done said you was done with. Oh, I know. It got too personal. But God keep telling you to call them back. God keep telling you to forgive them. God keep telling you to show that love, to shine that light. And you like, God, won't you just... Okay. And God's like, oh, you called the dead, but I ain't done. That's why you can't forget that name. You wake up in the morning like, I think I should call him today. But no, I'm done with him. <laughs> God's like, no, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I heard what you said. I heard what they said. But now listen to my report. See, God wanted to introduce an aspect of his character that they were unfamiliar with. They were familiar with the God who could rescue. We are all familiar with the God who can rescue. You know, he brought me up from my dark place. He, he placed my feet on solid ground. And here I stand. <laughs> and we love the God that can restore, re re rescue us. But some of us are so unfamiliar with the God who can restore The God who provides care in spite of your carelessness. The God that says, I know you messed it up, but there's a part of me you haven't met yet that you need to meet. It's the God who's full of mercy, grace, and forgiveness. The God who says, I know you made the decision that jacked it up. But I'm not just a God who loves you because you're right. I'm a God that stands by you even when you're wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm a God that's not afraid of what you jacked up, what you shook up, what you messed up. I, I'm not even a God who's ashamed to walk beside you as you're still messing up. Oh, man. Oh, some, that first half was for the saved folks. This is half is for the barely saved folks. I wanted you to let you know there's no such thing as a barely having a relationship with God. God's either fully in or he's, he's not there at all. But if you've accepted him once, he's fully there and he hasn't gone anywhere. He's there. He's, he, he was with you when you thought he wasn't with you. He was watching over you when you thought he wasn't watching over you. He was mending broken fences and broken relationships that you never saw him doing he's been working the whole time and, and that's the problem see the children of Israel in this moment Ezekiel knew he had a hard mountain to climb because God is such a God of remembrance that what God was actually telling those children that day that he was about re to restore was something many of them didn't even hear about you got to remember this isn't the generation that left Egypt this is the generation that got to the promised land and God told him you had to turn around. You're not ready yet. But in that same moment, God told him, but I'm going to give this place to your children. Now we're looking at Ezekiel. Ezekiel is talking to the children. The children whom God said it's going to be yours. 
And see, these children, y'all follow with me. They didn't know what God had told the generation before. But the amazing thing about God and, and the reason why we can't fight what God said is God is not one who forgets. What I'm saying to you is, in that moment, we see a picture of a generation inheriting what was promised to the previous. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Y'all just walk with me. What we see in this moment is God's telling them things that can be theirs that they didn't even know was theirs. But see, the thing about God is God is not one who forgets what he's promised. What, what, I, what I'm trying to tell you is many of y'all are trying to figure out how can God say this is mine? It, 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 a lot, a lot. See, God promised your grandmother something. God promised your great-grandmother something. God promised your great-great-grandmother something. And the thing about God is he does not forget. Some of y'all got more stuff on hold than you realize. God is like, it's not just about what you have heard from me. The thing about God is he gives promises generationally. There's, this is the picture he's painting. He's painting a picture that just because the last generation didn't walk in, it doesn't mean that you won't. And I say this because oftentimes God is sharing generational things with us in moments where we only feel like we can't even handle what's in front of us. But we got to realize God is not one who forgets. In order to restore, you got to have a what? Remembrance. You can't actually restore what you don't have a remembrance of. And, and a lot of us don't have the memory. We just don't remember what God told us when we first got saved. We just don't remember what God told us 10 years ago. We just don't remember what God said years ago. And it seems shocking that God didn't forget. But I want to tell you, it's a part of his character to remind you. It's a part of his character to say, I know you may think that this is too big for you. This is too much for you. But here's the thing. I'm not one who forgets. And just because they didn't walk in it doesn't mean you can't. But I want to leave you here with this simple moment. Because you know what the message was that Ezekiel was supposed to bring back to the children of Israel? Y'all want to hear it? It was this simple. What God told him to tell them was God said, live. All I'm asking you to do today, I'm not asking you to try to figure it out. I'm not asking you to do any more than what many of us can only do in this moment is just receive that God says, live. Not I. I didn't say it. God said it could live. He said, tell them that God said it can live. And what I want you to realize, it doesn't matter what was said as much as who said it. In all of our lives, we hear things said by many people, but we only value what people say who have the ability to back up what they said. It's never how large something is that someone presents to us. It's always the capability of the who, the presenter. And what I want you to leave here today is to know that it wasn't Pastor Bryant that said that he could live. It wasn't your emotions. It wasn't the charge of the room. It wasn't none of that. What many of you heard was a voice from God that said, it can live. And I want you to know that as simple as that sounds, as simple as that may be, that was the whole message Ezekiel had to carry back. All his hope was captured in one simple statement that is that God said, live. God said, it can live. And I want you to take that with you. I want you to take that with you because I know many of you, the thing that you thought of earlier, you were probably somewhere in the middle of the service blacking out, trying to figure out how God's going to do it. And I want you to know it's not how, it's who today. It's who said that you could have it back. It's who that said it can live. And as you leave here, I know you're going to have 
some mental battles to face. I know you're going to have some thoughts that come against what you are believing God for today to be resurrected. And I want you to do this. Tell that thought. It wasn't me. It wasn't Pastor Brian. It was God that said, it can live. I want you to tell the thought when it comes. I know it's going to come. It's going to come immediately as you leave out of here. If your thought was for your husband or your wife to be resurrected, they're going to do something stupid as soon as you leave here. But I want you to tell that stupid thing they do and that stupid decision that they make and the way it made you feel that it wasn't you that said that that could live. It was God who said it can live. Your boss is probably going to do something stupid on Monday. The house you love that you're trying to hate because you can't afford it. God said that you could keep it. I want you to tell the house that God said, I can have it. God said, it can live. Pastor Deborah. Glory to God. God is good. It can live, right? As believers, we know everything God says can live. It can live, praise God. Hallelujah. It can live. It can live because there is no word from God that's impossible of fulfillment. No worry from God. And so we see, you can take your seats. You can take your seats if you can. You can take your seats. I saw many people up on their feet saying, God, I believe it can live. And as believers, because it can live, in Hebrews chapter 10, 35, he says, therefore, don't cast away your confidence because it has a great recompense of a reward. He says, when you have patiently endured, you will receive the promise. Glory to God. That's what he says to believers. So as you're talking to that particular situation, as you're talking to that circumstance, remember, don't cast away your confidence no matter how crazy the situation may get, no matter how out of hand it appears to be, no, no matter how erratic it seems like it is, this is the confidence that we have. This is the confidence that we have. What it says in uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, and this is the confidence that we have, that if we believe that he hears us, and if he hears us, then we have answered prayer. Let me read that to you. It says, and this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege of boldness which we have in him. We are sure that if we ask anything, making any request according to his will in agreement with his own plan, he listens to and hears us. And if since we positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted us as our present possession the request made of him. This is a confidence that we have, that if we ask according to his will, according to his plan, that we're going to have what we ask. This is a confidence he's asking us to walk in, not telling you to do something. See, that's always the attack. What are you going to do? No matter what happens, it's always, what are you going to do? And that's the enemy always asking you, what are you going to do? And you got to say, this is the confidence that I have. Because I ask, and it's according to his will, he's going to do something. Ah, oh, see, it's the patience letting have his perfect work that's the problem. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is the confidence that we have. In Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. He says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 
Now, when he's talking about in time of need, he's talking about what's going on in your mind. He said, come boldly before the throne of grace so you can get your mind right. So you can think about it right. So you can see from God's perspective right. Come boldly. Don't come ashamed. Come boldly. Come when it's your fault. Come when it's somebody else's fault. He'll regulate your mind. Then Pastor Brian said the problem is our mind that keeps us from receiving what our heart is saying we can have. So God said, come. Hallelujah. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. Let's start at verse 10. He says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteous boldness. I want to read this to you out of the Amplified because it sounds so good. Pastor Brian called it the get loud version. Hallelujah. In the Amplified, it says in verse 10, Fear not, therefore there is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. See, a lot of times we want to get out of the difficulties. God says, no, there's some things you're going to go through. There's some things you're going to experience in life because you live on this earth. He said, but I will harden you against that. I will put a block on your mind where in some situations you won't even know that it's a hard time. Because you're, God, has, God has surrounded you with the thoughts that you need to think. And so you're not even concerned about the stuff, what I call, in your peripheral vision. Glory to God. He said, I will strengthen, I will harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. It's God's justice that will prevail. Praise God, hallelujah, and this is the confidence, I love it. Romans chapter 15 and verse 13, I love this passage of Scripture. He says, may the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over with hope. He said, as a believer, we're supposed to be bubbling over with hope. We're supposed to have this great expectation of what God can do. We sometimes get so in the middle of what God is trying to do. Did you not know that God called us to rest? God called us to rest. And I don't mean lay down your body rest. I mean rest your mind. You, lay in, you get in the bed to go to sleep, and your mind is still running. You sit down to look at the sunset, and your mind is still running. It reminds me of that Terminator movie, the first one that came out. When I got out of that movie, I'm telling you, my heart was still thumping, and I was still felt like I was running, because it seemed like that thing that, I mean, I mean, the t he's after the woman and the man, and he just won't stop. Down to the last bit, the hand is still. And see, that's the way Satan be, just still. At the la You're supposed to be resting. He's still. God says, come to me. Come to me. And that's what it says in Matthew, come to me, all ye that labor are a heavy burden. We got to read that, don't we? Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Let's look at verse 28. He says in the Amplified, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. He said, I will cause you to rest. Mm. I will cause you to rest. I will ease and refresh and He's, I will relieve and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am gentle, meek, 
humble, low, lowly in heart, and I will find, and you will find rest, relief, ease, refreshment, and recreation. Blessed quiet for your souls. What is he talking about? He's talking about what's going on in your mind. He said, if you come to me, you know what? Let's read this out of the message. Let's read this out of the message because it is just, it's good. It's so good. We don't want you to get caught up in the King James and trying to figure it out. But we'll put this, we'll, we'll do the message Bible on this if I can find the message Bible. Anyways, it's in here. Message Bible. Okay, it is not in here. There it is. Message Bible. Matthew. This is what he says. Listen at this. I'm going to read verse 29. He said, walk with me and work with me. He said, watch how I do it. This is what Jesus is telling his, he's telling his disciples. He says, again, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. When you think about rhythm, you think of a cadence. You think of something that has a timing. You think of something that, that, that's, that's methodical. It's like, he said, there's a cadence to walking in my grace. Glory to God. He says, learn from me the unforced rhythms of grace. He said, grace does not force you into anything. He said, it'll cause you to rest and give you refreshment and cause you to have ease. He says, I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitted on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Freely and lightly. Isn't that where we all want to be? But he talks to us again about us having a hope in him. That's why Jesus came. To give us hope. That's why in John 3.16, he says, For God so loved the world that he came and gave, he came. He gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But verse 17 is so important. I did not come to condemn the world, but it's through me that you might be saved. Glory to God. You might be saved. God is such a good God and such a loving God. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, looking at verse 10. I know I'm throwing a lot of scriptures out here to you, but these are things that are foundational for us. He says, this is the kind of love we are talking about. Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage They've done to our relationship with God. He said, I came to restore a relationship back with God. He said, a relationship that had been damaged by sin. He said, I did not want that separation from my people again. So therefore, he gave his only begotten son. Listen, it's actually love became a man. We talk about God is love. God's word appeared. I love John, St. John, where he talks about the love of God. He said the word of God came into the world. The word, God, the word was God, and it was made manifest in human flesh. So love became a man, Jesus Christ, who died as our sacrificial offering. And by believing in him, we received the gift of salvation. Does God care about us? The answer is yes. And his love is indiscriminate. He came for the world. He loves everyone and cares about every detail of our lives. And we're truly free to choose that love. We're truly free to choose that love. In Revelations chapter 3 and verse 20, he says, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone opened the door, he said, I'll come in. The Bible says I'll sup with him, but he says I'll have a meal with him. How to better get to know a person than to sit down and have a meal with them. When you're getting to know a person, you don't go to normally a, a drive through to pick up some food and y'all talk in the car. You're getting to know someone, you go, you make reservations. 
You sit down in a pleasant place where the music is not too loud so you can hear each other converse and talk to one another, so you can get to know each other, so you can get comfortable with one another. Have you ever been out to dinner with someone who was kind of tense and after it was all over, they all relaxed and telling you all about their family and what's going on and you're laughing and you're talking and you're kicking up? God said, that's the way I want it to be with me. He said, I want you to come and learn how I do it. The only way you're going to have to learn how I do it, first you got to accept me. I'm knocking on the door because I want to come in because I want to teach you how to walk in my rhythm. How to walk in an easy pace. How to take your ease and rest regardless of what's going on around you. Jesus knew his future. He knew that he was going to die on the cross and that it was going to be gruesome. But he took his time to answer every question the disciples had. He took time to even talk to people who were against him. He took the time. And he says, listen, I stand at the door and I knock. Come spend some time with me. Learn how I do it. Learn to walk by the rhythms of grace. Learn how to walk by the rhythms of grace. There is no situation. There is no circumstance. There is nothing that's going on in your life that's too hard for God, that God has not already seen before. God's like, I've been down that road. It is nothing like talking to somebody who's been somewhere and overcome. Jesus says, I've overcome it all. Believer, he said, and guess what? You can hear my voice, believer. You can tame that mind, believer. Because I live on the inside of you. Because I filled you up on the day you got born again with myself. As Pastor Brian says, you already have enough faith to believe God for everything. You just got to get that mind under control. So you start to talk to your mind about the decision that you already made for Christ. That's why we study the word, to find out who we are and what we have and what God has purchased for us. Thank God. Thank God for salvation. Thank God that he gave an offer to the world. Thank God that God is indiscriminate. Thank God that it's open to everyone. Thank God we don't have to earn it, but it's the gift of God. It is the gift of God. So we celebrate today. We've been kind of laughingly saying that this is a Super Bowl for Christians. Our team wins. Our team wins. Our team wins. <laughs> we know the end from the beginning. And I'm just going to say, if there's anyone who's not received Jesus into their heart today, it is so very simple. So very simple. He said, the only thing you have to do, he says, I'm knocking at the door. You just need to open up and let me in. You just need to open up and ask Jesus to come into your heart. It is just that simple. Just ask him to come in and begin that relationship. The relationship that he died for. The relationship that he paid for. And as John said, he says, you know, I'm telling you these things. He said, not because you loved him, but because he loved you. And the only thing God has been trying to do ever since we got born again was to show us that he loves us. That's the only thing God, you know, and God does things for us, listen, not because we earn them. God does things for us because he loves us. And you want to know something? That is the one and only reason. That's why Paul in the book of Ephesians, he says, my prayer 
is that you come to know the love of God. The breath, the death, the height of it. See, because when you have messed up to the point where you think there is no return, love says, love says, love says, love says, come to me and I'll give you rest, first of all, in your mind. I'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. And if it's a challenge, you, I will harden you against difficulties. So you don't have to get mad and you don't have to take revenge and you don't have to feel like I got to get back at anybody. I used to tell a lady, I said, listen, I don't care what these people say on this job. They don't determine my increase, my multiplication. They're just, a, they're just one avenue God can use. We don't ever put a limit on the one who created all things. That does not make any sense at all. God is limitless. God is limitless. He asked a question in the Old Testament. He says, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? But you know what? We're in a better position to receive from God when we're not in panic mode. That's why God keeps talking to us about take your rest and take your ease. Take your rest, take your ease. Take your rest. And as, as Pastor Brian was saying, as you speak to those situations, listen, it's not how loud you say it. Don't be screaming at the people. Don't be talking about, I got to go take a break because I got to yell at the people in the building. <laughs> Is that we walk in agreement with God knowing what he has promised us. And listen, again, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Jesus died because he loved. Jesus was beat with many stripes because he loved. Jesus took on and took our place so we don't have to. So we need to stop trying to pay for a penalty that's already been paid for. And what do I mean by that? You're thinking you got to take on something that Jesus has already taken on, taken on for us. Hallelujah. God is such a good God. He's such an awesome God. Such a magnificent Father. And again, only thing he's trying to express to us is I love you. And you in particular. I love you. And that I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. But I'll be with you until the end of the world. He said, just come to me and learn. Learn of me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm done. And God is such an excellent God. And listen, this is an awesome day to celebrate. This is the confidence that we have. Our confidence in, is in what he did, not what we can do. And watch God. Watch God. Watch God. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Watch God. Watch what God can do in your mind. He's already done everything in your spirit. Watch what he can do in your body. Watch God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, let me see. I believe we have a video presentation at this time. We're so excited that you made a decision to join us today. But we couldn't think of a better way to end this service than to let you experience who we are. So, look, 
We believe that the only way God can be limited is if we limit how he can use us. So we believe in stirring up the gift inside of you so that we can reach this world in more ways than we even think is possible. Absolutely. Everybody has a purpose here at Revealing Truth Ministries. We're extraordinary around here. Yes, we are. So somebody, cue the fire! Dry, like sandpaper in my throat. Words thought, but not formed. Dreams dreamt, but not seen. Dry, like paint wide open with no painter or canvas. Like an old, unused organ thrown in the corner of an old, unused storage shed. Dry, no sound, no breath, no movement. Like dance suspended in time, no movement. Dry. What manner of lifelessness is this, oh God? I live in you and you live in me, so come alive, dry bones, come alive. This canvas that's called my life is yours to paint on and play with. Speak, oh God, move, oh God. Come alive in me, come alive in you, come alive in her. Creating us a work of art worthy of reproduction, worthy of your expression, worthy of your penmanship. Come alive! Come alive! Come alive! Come alive! Come alive! Come alive! Gonna sing to your travels until you're covered in light, and the valleys bloom like a rosebud in the light. Mm -hmm. Hear the call to attention, feel the change in the air, for the ground is dry. And the clouds are over here. Yeah. I'ma sing it again. Say, come alive, come alive, come alive, dry bones. Come alive, come alive, come alive, dry bones. Awake, arise, inhale the light. Come alive, come alive. Are you waiting on hell? Or is it waiting on you? For the Holy Ghost is already in the room. Oh, so you better get ready. Cause who knows what he'll do? Where the four winds blow, there's a breakthrough. in the gray now and dance like you young you do not have to live in chains now there's a key within your song so leave the past where it belongs child, and take a leap into the light
get up and rise, get up and rise, wake and rise, get up and rise, he's alive, he's alive in you. church we truly believe that this is the opportunity for some people to come alive for the first time you know the bible tells us that your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men and that's such a critical part of what we do here at revealing truth ministries and what you saw on display was how many different ways your gift can be used to bring people into the kingdom of god but the first decision you have to make is to be brought into his kingdom. And so this is an incredible moment, incredible opportunity to make that decision. And what we mean is be saved. We mean to give your life over to Christ. I'll tell you what, it's a moment that we would love to celebrate with you. And so if that's you today, if you're saying, Pastor Brian, I am not saved, but today I want to be saved. I'm telling you what, it's a simple process. And it starts with a confession that I'll speak and you just speak it along with me. That's really, we can all speak it together. Is that okay? And it says, Father God, Father God I, thank you I thank you for your son. For your son. I, thank you I thank you that he died, that he died for, my for my sins and cleansed me, and cleansed me from, all from all unrighteousness. unrighteousness. And I just thank you, Father. And I, thank you, Father. And I see Jesus I see as, my Lord as my Lord and personal savior if you say that simple prayer you are saved right because can we rejoice i know there's some people that said that for the first time they're being saved some people online that are being saved but i always like to check and see if there's a few bold ones in the room that are like pastor brian that was my first time saying that i just got saved and if that was you could you just raise your hand and say that was my first time i just got saved that was my opportunity and nobody in this room i see your hand back there we got one man back there i see you awesome incredible i tell you what around this building and also online if that was you we have qr codes you scan them um, and it'll let you know where you can go so that we can give you more information and, and connect with you about what it means to be saved and the life that you now have access to. Can we celebrate one more time for the, for the young man in the house that just got saved, for those online that just got saved. But this is also your opportunity to sow, to give. And here at Revealing Truth Ministries, we don't think this is a downtime. We think this is a hype time, right? Because we don't give simply to receive, but we give to what, y'all? Release. release. Release God's favor over our lives, over our finances, to release this ministry, to pursue vision, and to release our trust in God's hands. That's what your giving does. And so I'll let Pastor Deborah just finish it off, right? Wow. I, I, she said you were already rolling. I'm already rolling. And so if you're ready to give at this time, um, there's ways on the screen. There's ways online there's so many ways you can give uh, we're truly thankful that you do give like i say it gives us the opportunity to pursue vision paul spoke about how he was thankful that they gave gifts to the church so that he was able to continue the work and so he was appreciative that's why we say we're thankful that you do give right the bible also tells us that our giving is a sign that our trust is in god's hands we're saying god we can only do so much but we know you can do more than enough and so we are going to put our trust in your hands. And God says, man, where your treasure is, there in your heart will be also. So we give as a sign and say, God, our trust is in you. Our heart is with you. Amen. 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 Weren't they fantastic? I tell you what, I mean, you guys saw that sign. It said Creative Collective, right? Creative Collective is a ministry we started this year where we want to see the gifts that you have and show you how your gift can be used in the kingdom of God. 
right? What you saw was, you know, we had makeup artists that came up. We had fashion designers in this church. We just don't believe that you can limit what God can do through you. But we believe the way that we'll truly reach the world is as we expand the ways we communicate the gospel. Like, I believe, Pastor Brian, say Pastor Brian, personally believes because I've experienced that you could cook a meal so good that people like it was the glory of God. Like I literally tasted God's glory on a plate, right? Some of y'all looking at me strange. You know, you done ate something and you was like, my God, my God, my God wasn't that good. Man, it was, I, that's all I'm saying. There's so many ways. And I believe that as we expand those ways, not limit ourselves, that we can see the kingdom of God expands. As you understand that, man, you can do makeup to the glory of God, right? You can do fashion design to the glory of God. You're simply saying, I'm allowing God to use me in this way. And we believe the church has spent enough time rejecting gifts that it's time we start accepting gifts, right? Don't make me preach another message. I got preach on me. I got another service, but I can do it right here if, we, if you're ready to go another round. But God has told us not to just say it, but to take it seriously. So the Creative Collective is where we take serious the gift God gives you. We don't care how strange you think it is, just bring it to us. We'll, we'll tell you if it's strange, but we'll tell you where you can use it, even if it's strange. <laughs> Feeling strange, come see us. Feeling weird, come see us. Feeling out of place, come see us. And if you're that person today in our app, in the QR codes on the way out, right? You scan those codes are in our app. You can register for the Creative Collective and we'll reach out to you. And um, man, make sure that you have a room for your gift to be used, right? Awesome, right? Awesome. Well, if you guys enjoyed today's service, the hosts look like they're coming to kick me off the stage. Y'all see that, right? So y'all don't normally see this online. Online, I look to the right and then I leave. It's because they be looking at me just like that, like, Pastor Brian, go. Beautiful paintings. Thank you, guys. Thank you, creative team. Thank you guys so much for your dedication and your hard work. Thank you for bringing it together. We came to join you. They came if to join me? You can stay well, come up on. here if you want. Come on, give We're me six feet, that. but you can join me. Look. I don't know if you're going to get six feet right here in this pocket. So <laughs> yes, so I'm Crystal. And I'm JT. And we work with the people that come to the Creative Collective. And like Pastor Ryan said, it's time the church started accepting so many gifts, various yes. gifts. If you have a gift, we will find room for you. That is what our task is. You yes. bring a gift, we'll figure out how to use it. You just bring it. That's our desire. <laughs> so as Pastor Brian was saying, if you saw throughout the whole service, yeah. through, then, yeah. their creativity. Yeah, he just walks off just right there. Like, it's okay. It's mom. all right. Didn't even notion her. Like, come on. It's all like, right. this. You're so, you're dressed. This, this blood Sunday red is giving me life. Okay, I can't. <laughs> Let's let him bask in it for a minute. He said sometimes meals are so good. You felt God. Like, I feel like this dress is so good. I'm feeling oh. God. Like, I cannot. <laughs> Maybe you do need to leave because it's just too much. I felt cute till I stood next to you. <laughs> In that moment, I said, wait, I downgraded. Okay. <laughs> Let me get it together. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> I'm sorry, JT. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do what oh. you was doing. <laughs> no, it's, it's all right. It's all right. See? That's the creativity right there. It is. Improv. It is. Mm -hmm. Right yep. here. Like that. Bring Just that. like that. We want it. There it is. We want you. Got the idea? You got the improv idea? We want it. We Where want you at? It. Boom. So, throughout this moment today, throughout all of the creativity, activity yes. that was going on today uh -huh. which was amazing yes. if you had an experience during the voices of legacy or through our creative arts department or through spoken word or through painting you can mark that moment and get plugged in yes. you can get plugged in any of the ministries here at revealing truth ministry yes. all you got to do is go into the rtm nation app rtm app be able to go ahead and get signed up, get plugged in. If you don't have the app, it's okay. You can go into our socials, go on the link. We got all the information there. Yes. You can get plugged in. Yes, make this your moment. Don't just let it be something you saw. Let it be something that you are a part of. Anything you see up here on stage, it could be you. It truly could be you. Absolutely. Um, coming up, we have Nights of Worship. 
this Wednesday. Yes. yes. It's coming up. Our April night of worship is, like you said, this Wednesday. And we welcome you to join the Tampa campus. Join us in person or online. We have some special guests that will be joining us for this night of worship. So you don't want to miss it. Yes, it is a great time to come together as a nation to be able to worship together. That's such a powerful moment. It is. It really is. To Pastor move us Ryan, forward through the through the start of the start the month off right. Yes. Boom. Kick it off right. Kick it off right. We had today and then we got Wednesday. Listen, Woo. we about to double down. Double down. Will you be here for the double down is the question. That is the question. Will you we be want here? you here. For we'll the double be down. here. Will you be here with us? <laughs> right. Question. <laughs> And also, we are getting so close to launching our Truth Connections, and it's not too late to sign up. You can sign up by scanning the QR code or texting Truth Connections to 813-544-4314, or visit the RTM app and get signed up there. This is a way that we can build community through the truth. Oh. Yes, truth, right like that. Just it's like about that. about the truth here. So I'm going to give you guys the instructions for dismissal before we dismiss you because we want to make sure we dismiss expeditiously because we are going to be making sure we're turning the service over, meaning we're doing COVID cleaning and all of that before our 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. Um, attenders come to join us. So we want to make sure that we dismiss expeditiously. We'll start on this slide and then we'll make our way across the room um, from the back to the front. I'm hoping all of this makes sense. I think you got it. You look like very intelligent people. Yes. So we will be moving expeditiously um, as we dismiss. But if you all want to go ahead and stand. So happy Easter. Happy Easter. Make sure you enjoy your family. Enjoy that time together. Yes. Yep. You ready? Okay. Boom. All oh. of that. All of that. All Boom. of that. Protecting Just... the way. We're doing all kinds of things. Listen, jump into the app. It might be some stuff that's on these cards that we didn't say, but if you go into the app, you will see it. Absolutely. I promise you that. So, Google Play Store, Apple Store, either one. Yep, Boom. Instagram, hit us up on there. We on Facebook. Look look for the truth. When you're looking for the truth, you'll find us. You'll look find the truth. truth. We'll look for right the truth, there. you'll find the truth. Just like that. Just like that. That's it and that's all. That's all. So go ahead, raise your hands, because mm -hmm. we about to dismiss. <laughs> <laughs> so let the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth. The meditation of my heart. Meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. My strength. My strength. And my redeemer. And my redeemer. So we are starting with this side. Let's go ahead and move.